Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Welcome guys to another video. Check it out. That's me in the thumbnail right there. Finally, Apus has made a video response to me. I waited a friggin' year for this. You little you wanna review it me. Me? Hi everybody and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I, I, I miss that voice. <laughs> the I miss the fake laughter. Dumbest argument in Islamic apologetics that I've heard so far. And that argument comes from none other than a person called Farid Response. Okay, so so here's the thing, guys. Um, I'm just so happy. I, I put out like 52 videos. I have a playlist of 52 videos responding to this guy. And finally, finally, he responds to one. Um, the video that he's actually responding to is a video I put out in like September the 18th, 2019. And it's taken him over a year. But... Hey, I can't complain. I can't complain. Anyway, so from out of all the videos I made, Ridvan picked this one and called it the dumbest Muslim argument ever made. So, Yanni, this has to be the worst video I ever made. This very intelligent friend of ours called Farid Response made the following response. The moon would have been visible in these areas, or late at night towards the morning in these areas. One of the reasons why we do not have heaps of documented evidence was because most people were asleep at night. Remember, this is the 7th century. <laughs> <laughs> there is no reason to assume that the split occurred for a long duration of time. So even if one was awake at the time, it is not likely that one would have noticed the moon splitting. <laughs> Furthermore, even if you did see the moon split for a short period, you would most likely doubt yourself after seeing it return to its original state. <laughs> um, so that was a chunk of his uh, refutation, uh, a lot of fake laughter, and um, yeah, let's just play my original clip, okay? Um, because Apos, uh, I mean Radvan, um, he kind of misrepresented me and didn't really quote me fully. One of the reasons why we do not have heaps of documented evidence was because most people were asleep at night. Remember, this is the 7th century. More importantly, there is no reason to assume that the split occurred for a long duration of time. So even if one was awake at the time, it is not likely that one would have noticed the moon splitting. Furthermore, even if you did see the moon split for a short period, you would most likely doubt yourself after seeing it return to its original state. Going around telling other temple that you saw the moon split would pretty much cause them to doubt your sanity. If you were someone with documented events, you would have believed whoever told you that it split in the first place. If by chance you were someone that did witness the moon splitting and went ahead to document it, then like most ancient documents, yours may have been lost due to the passage of time. Or maybe not, maybe such documentation has survived but we simply have not heard of it yet. Okay, so I don't know if there's some sort of miscommunication going on here, Ritvan didn't understand my uh, point from the video, but I listed several things that need to occur for you to have documentation of the moon splitting. So one, you need to be awake. Two, you need to be outside looking at it when that's happening. Three, you need to believe what you're seeing. Four, you need to actually write it down. And if it's written down, and if it's not lost, then we have it. And the issue is, so much of what was written from the 7th century is lost. They would have made a record of this. People wouldn't have just ignored this. Like, oh, look, the moon is split in two. Should we record this? Should we write this down? Ah, no, forget about it. Just, just... Ignore it. Not important. Ignore it. Ridvan is making it seem as if I'm arguing that this was never documented. Not once does he quote me saying that much of what was documented was lost. So, Apos, the thing is that you need to represent your opponents fairly. Don't call me Apos, okay? Because if you're dealing with the dumbest argument made by the dumbest Muslim apologist, then the least you can do is represent them fairly. Think about it. Seriously. This is the 7th century, as he says. I don't know what this guy thinks the 7th century was like. In the 7th century, there were many civilizations around the world that had proper cities, libraries. Civilizations were watching the sky all the time. They were using this, uh, this opportunity to look at the stars, look at the moon, look at all the objects in the sky. There was advanced astronomy or pre-astronomy, whatever it is called, in India. Records were being kept in China. Right here among the Roman or post-Roman civilizations, the objects in the sky meant something. Okay, so here's the thing, here's the issue. 
Um, so what if there were libraries? Most of the information from those eras haven't even reached us. And if you don't believe me, you don't have to take my word for it. At least listen to your foster father, David Wood. As for the who mentioned Jesus, I'd like to point this out because this is a very, uh, this is a very interesting question. Uh, one, many people overestimate the amount of historical sources we have from the first and second and third centuries. We know that the Roman emperor during the time of Tiber um, during the time of Jesus was the Roman emperor Tiberius. Here's a little question for historical research: How many sources? How many historical sources do we have that even mention? The Roman Emperor Tiberius. Thousands. You had libraries of information. Right, David? Within 150 years of his life. Exactly. If you don't know, we have 10 sources. We have 10 ancient sources within 150 years of the most powerful man on the planet. Wow. <sighs> that even mention his existence. So we have 10 sources. And by the way, one of those is the Bible. The oh, and by the way, five of them aren't even contemporaneous. In other words, the second emperor of Rome, who ruled for like two decades, the most powerful man in the world at the time, and you only have like five sources even mentioning him. And you're expecting what? You're expecting libraries of books that mention the moon splitting, even though it probably split for just a few seconds, a minute, who knows? No, guys, they, they they recorded every detail about everything that they saw happening in the skies. They recorded every time Halley's Comet came by. They recorded all these things. Um, they would have been pretty darn freaked out by the moon splitting in half, but no one was. Why? Most obvious explanation is didn't happen. Uh, David believes the sun stopped in the sky to allow Israel to slaughter the enemies, according to the Bible, and no one else saw it. David, what are you going to say about that? Um, I mean, well, just to point out, there are there are some different interpretations of that. But even if you go, uh, even if you go completely literal, uh, literal interpretation, um, <laughs> yeah, you're you're kind of in a different realm of history. You're talking. You're not talking seventh century, seventh century A.D. Uh, you're talking about what? What's the date? Fourteenth, fourteenth century B.C. Um, so yeah, but I mean, I don't consider it. It's it's not the sort of thing that that's being Thanks. used to to verify something. You know what I mean? Like I've never heard a Christian say, "Ah, we know that Christianity is true because of the miracle of the 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 sun stopping in the sky or something like that." Again, there there are, there are different interpretations of that. Um, On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel. O oh, sun, stand still over Gibeon, O oh, moon, over the valley of Aijalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Joshar, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. There are a couple of points that I made in the original video that I didn't really feel the need to uh, cover again. So you can check that out right here. And uh, for the rest of you guys, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't call me apex, okay?